everyone, welcome to my channel. In this episode, I will be converting this unflattering prom dress into a classic short summer dress. Now, I know the contrast fabric is aesthetically pleasing to the eye, but I was just not a fan of the top fabric. It felt a little cheap and probably best for a makeup kit kind of bag um, than on an evening dress. So I thought to only use the Georgette to make the whole dress. Now the specs of the evening dress, although I loved the shape of the halter neckline, the bodice didn't have the dots to contour my bust, making it seem as if I didn't have a chest or if I was flat chested, which isn't flattering. I also loved the open back, but had these random strings, which I didn't know how to put them on, so I just left them to dangle at the back. The pleats on the skirt was beautiful, but the skirt was too long for a short girl like me. And I also wanted some leg action, so I decided to make it shorter. What I did first was remove the zip with an unpicker. I wanted to see if I could reuse the zip, so I decided to remove the zip using this kind of technique. It took a while, and I wish I just cut through the fabric because I ended up not using the zip, but if you want to savor the fabric, I do recommend that you use this technique. I then cut off the bodice and put it aside to make a makeup kit later or something. And then separated the self fabric from the lining fabric on the georgette skirt part. So I just wanted to let you know that I've made a poll on my YouTube channel. So you know, just do me a favor and rate if you would like me to make accessories too, like bags and hats. And then, you know, I'll truly appreciate it, hey? Anyway, I took the lining of the skirt and folded it in half and from the hem measured up 17 inches from the hem up and with a hotel soap, which by the way is the best kind of fabric marker for me, marked across the one fold of the lining skirt. I then marked approximately one inch down from the waist and cut through making the lining shorter than the top fabric. I then repeated the process on the top Georgette fabric without cutting the extra inch. And as you can see, there is a length difference. I took the leftover fabric and cut the side seams off and separated the front and back. Using the one half of the fabric, I folded it in half and by the fold, pinned it to the mannequin by the center front. I then contoured the bodice by pinning the fabric on the sides, keeping in mind to have the fabric fall naturally on the form. Then from under the apex point by 3 fourths to an inch, I pinned downwards creating darts that contoured the bust. Now using my fave soap, <laughs> I marked the front neckline. Then measured from the neck down 6 inches to the center front bust, then down 5 inches from the center front bust to the waist. From the center front bust to the side seam, I measured a quarter of my bust measurement across, including half an inch seam allowance. Then from the center front waist point to the side seam, a quarter of my waist measurement across, including the half an inch seam allowance. And then with the free hand connected the points and designed the boat neck style bodice. Then marked two inches from the waist up to allocate the waistband. And 
marked the dot points of both sides. I then removed the pins out of the way to cut out the front bodice. I then repeated the same with the back bodice without dots and matched the back to the front. Make sure the waist measurement is accurate in relation to the front bodice. With the bodice cut out, I marked the dot legs using the marker and defined the dot size using pins. I then unpinned the design and transferred it to the access lining fabric of both front and back bodices. I also cut off the access fabrics of the dot to avoid any unwanted lumps on the bodice once sewn. Next, we're going to make waistbands that are two inches high, but you tear or cut three inches to include seam allowance across the weft of the fabric. Then you replicate the waistband onto the lining fabric. So in total, you'll have the front bodice, back bodice, skirt, and waistband. Starting with the front bodice, we're going to sew together the dot legs by a quarter of an inch to a point. And do so for both dots of both the self and lining fabric. Then attach the back bodice to the front bodice at the shoulder seam by half an inch. Then attach the soft fabric bodice to the lining bodice using this neat finishing method where you sew the armholes and necklines closed, then flip the top inside out. Before sewing the armholes closed, make sure to cut out access lining fabric by pinning the self fabric down onto the lining fabric and cutting off the unwanted access fabric of the lining. Next, sew the side seams together by using the neat finishing method where you open and separate the self and lining fabric and matching it with the other and sewing leaving both in and out neatly finished. Next, you will sew the self and lining waist seam together and attach the waistbands. I do one waistband at a time to avoid any slip ups, but if you're a pro and can do both at once, you're more than welcome to do so. After neatly attaching the waistband to the bodice, I then cut the excess fabric and sew the self and lining waistband together. 
To prep the skirt, I cut down the center of back seam. And gathered the waist using two rows of basting stitches and gathered to match the width of the waistband. I then did the same for the lining. Then using pins, I neatly attached the skirt to the waistband using the same neat finishing I've done for the waistbands earlier. Closing the dress, I'll be using an invisible zipper that I got from Metro. I believe it's a 25 centimeter, but I suggest you get a 30 to 45 centimeter zip for a much easier slip on and off. I will be also using this zip foot. There is also the traditional zip foot, but I tell you, using this one has been such a king for me while finishing garments because it has these two gaps on each side of the foot, which allows the zip to feed through, stitching close enough to the teeth of the zip for a much cleaner finish. By the way, if you guys want a tutorial on how to apply zips, comment below and I'll make one for you, okay? Before sewing down the other side of the zip, I used pins to mark the waistband to have both sides of the dress be identical. And then I closed the rest of the dress at the center back. And then flipped the extra bits of the zip inwards and tacked it down for a cleaner finish and complete look. And here's the dress. Um, I think the dress is very simple. I wish I added an applique in the middle to make it more like cute, but hey, you know, classic will never die, right? <laughs> 